Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This video is in collaboration with the Preclinical Society at the University of Cape Town. And the topic that we will be covering in this video is the immunology of microbacterium tuberculosis. So, there are roughly 1.7 billion people infected worldwide. And if you're living in South Africa, specifically Cape Town, you're probably one of them, myself included. Microbacterium tuberculosis may be regarded as the most successful intracellular bacterium worldwide. All this is scary, but there's a catch. There's only about a 5-15% to chance that you will develop the disease if you're already infected with the bacterium. Now this is interesting. Why do only some people develop the disease? The answer lies in your immune system. And this is why understanding the immune system is crucial. In this video, we will be going through the basics of the immune system, what we know about the immune system's response against mycobacterium tuberculosis. We'll talk about the ways in which the bacterium evades your immune system and how your body forms granulomas to wall off the infection. We will start off with the basics of the immune system and eventually dive into both primary and secondary tuberculosis. So, if a pathogen managed to cross physical barriers, a slightly more specific approach is needed. And this is where our innate immune system comes into play. It is made up of cells like macrophages, neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, and mast cells. But in our case, the first cell to encounter the pathogen is an alveolar macrophage. Now, these cells are normally just chilling in your lungs in case you inhale something that's not air. Pathogens have pathogen-associated molecular patterns, PAPs, and result in the production of danger-associated molecular patterns, DAPs. And as the name suggests, they are patterns specific to a certain property of a pathogen or the inflammation that is caused by this pathogen. And these are the patterns that allow our innate immune system to trigger a more tailored response to this particular threat. This is because your innate immune system will need a different response to viruses, a different response to extracellular bacteria, a different response to intracellular bacteria, you get the point. The innate immune system will need to respond differently depending on the type of threat. Okay, hold up. I thought the innate immune system was supposed to be non-specific and the adaptive response was a specific one. Well, that was our understanding initially, but we've come to understand that the innate immune system is not as non-specific as we once thought. And although it is not even close to as specific as the adaptive immune system, it does manage to produce a more tailored response. So, the cells in your innate immune system have these so-called pattern recognition receptors, which recognize the PAMPs and the DAMPs. To give you an example of this, TOLAC receptors are pattern recognition receptors, and TOLAC receptor 4 are found on cell surface and recognize lipoproteins on gram-negative bacteria, and TOLAC receptors 5 are found inside the cytoplasm and recognize single-stranded RNA viruses. So, depending on the type of pathogen that you're infected with, one of these receptors will be activated and they will trigger the transcription and translation of various pro-inflammatory proteins that are tailored to the pathogen that you're infected with. Okay, enough of the innate immune system. Let's dive into the adaptive immune system. So first of all, we need antigen-presenting cells like dendritic cells or macrophages to alert the adaptive immune system of the threat. To do this, the antigen-presenting cell needs to engulf the pathogen, digest it, and present pieces of the pathogen known as antigens on a receptor known as MHC class 2 and present the antigen to T-cell receptors now, to activate helper T cells, antigen presenting cells require three sets of signals MHC class 2 with an antigen interacting with the T cell receptor, a co stimulatory interaction, and finally a cytokine signal. Once T cells are activated, they differentiate into Th1, Th2, or Th17 depending on the signal from the antigen presenting cell. Because the innate immune system does have some specific idea of what's out there, they produce specific cytokines that help T cells differentiate into an appropriate T helper cell. T helper cells can then rally specific B cells or cytotoxic T cells to fight this infection. Now, because the adaptive immune system uses a very specific antigen presented to it by the innate immune system, it can mount a much more specific response compared to the innate immune system that relies on vague molecular patterns. Now, that was a lot. But I hope you have a better understanding of the immune system so that we can move on and tackle the immune response against mycobacterium tuberculosis. These are the notes I'll be using for this video. And as usual, you can find these notes in the description below. Just don't forget to like and subscribe on your way. Upon exposure to mycobacterium tuberculosis, alveolar macrophages detect PAMPs on the bacterium using toll-like receptors 2 and 4, and then engulf the bacterium. Now, normally the phagosome is fused with the lysosome, and this should digest the bacterium. And if this does happen, you would have cleared the infection. Well done to your immune system. However, TB has a few tricks up its sleeve to evade the immune system. It usually blocks the fusion of lysosomes and phagosome. It interferes with MHC class 2 antigen presentation and thus delaying adaptive immune response. And the bacteria may escape the phagosome altogether and live undetected in the cell's cytoplasm. Now, infected macrophages may clear the infection, be overrun by the bacterium and die, or the bacterium may lay dormant, undetected inside the macrophages. 
the various factors that play an important role when it comes to the ability of the macrophages to eliminate the bacterium, but arguably, the most important factor is vitamin D. Vitamin D is necessary for the production of catholicidins and defensins. These proteins are important because they help disrupt the slimy cell membrane of mycobacterium tuberculosis. So, make sure you get enough sunlight. Okay, if the primary innate response of macrophages is not sufficient and the bacteria continues to divide, then it's time to call for backup and bring out the big guns. Now, dendritic cells are responsible to take the antigen to the lymph nodes where B and T cells are waiting to be useful. But hold up, it's a trap. Dendritic cells are sort of a Trojan horse that brings the bacterium straight to the lymph nodes. And here, the bacteria set up a center of infection within the lymph node. Damn, this tiny bacterium is flippin' smart. Anyways, this explains the Gans complex. Gans complex is a finding on chest x-ray that is made up of calcification in the lungs known as Gans focus and calcification in the lymph nodes, which is a strong indication of TB infection. You may be wondering where all the calcium is coming from, but don't worry, we'll get to that in just a moment. Anyways, even though TB may seem like the master of disguise, our adaptive immune cells get a wind of what's happening, as dendritic cells do pull through and present the antigens to the appropriate T cells. Now, as you would know, this interaction between T cells and antigen presenting cells, i.e. our dendritic cell, requires three sets of signals. MHC class 2 T cell receptor interaction, a co-stimulated interaction, and finally a cytokine signal. In our case, the cytokine signal is IL-12, and it's important to remember, IL-12 is needed to help T helper cells differentiate into Th1 cell. So, once a T helper cell receives all the signals, it becomes a Th1 cell. Th1 cells produce interferon gamma, and this cytokine activates macrophages. Normally, macrophages are chilled, and this is important because we don't want our immune system to be overreacting to everything and causing more damage than we need. But in our case, the threat is serious, and so macrophages are told to become who they really are. Big, angry eating machines. Now it's game on. These activated macrophages are highly aggressive and are much more capable of destroying the bacteria. And so the numbers of bacteria start to drop and we start winning the battle. TB at this stage realizes that it's losing and decides to retreat and survive to live to fight another day. It keeps evading the immune system and reduces its replication rates to prevent detection. Now this is where our body really struggles to eliminate the bacteria. Now, because of the constant stimulation of interferon gamma, activated macrophages become epithelial macrophages. And they're called epithelial because their shape is similar to epithelial cells. Their main job is to wall off the infection and form a granuloma. So, a granuloma is made of a central caseating necrosis surrounded by epithelial macrophages following a layer of lymphocytes. Importantly, we have a few fibroblasts producing collagen to add to this barrier. And this wall does a much better job than Trump's wall between the US and Mexico. Epithelial macrophages produce TNF alpha that maintains the granuloma, keeping the bacterium trapped. And they upregulate the levels of 1 alpha hydroxylase, which allows for the accumulation of calcium. And this results in calcification over time. This calcification is what allows for the detection of the Gans complex in the chest X ray. Now, at this stage, you have latent TB and you have nothing to worry about because you're completely fine. As long as the bacterium is still trapped. This is all good, but here's the catch the bacteria is still alive and it's waiting, waiting for your immune system to get suppressed. Now, let's have a look at a scenario where your immune system is suppressed. You're too stressed about your exams, you're not eating well, and you're not sleeping well. And boom, TB gets a chance to colonize your lungs and do really bad things. Now this scenario probably sounds quite familiar to you because it's the story of every med student. You're stressed because of your exam, you lack sleep because you're pumping caffeine into your body, and you're eating junk because you don't have the time to cook healthy food. Guys, you need to be serious about taking care of yourself. And TB is not the only reason. There's also a virus going around known as Corona. So. Let's assume you get immunosuppressed. TB will start to rapidly replicate, and because your body has an immune memory against this pathogen, the adaptive response goes into overdrive and results in a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. It's probably also because of some proteins produced by TB, because this is exactly what TB wants. The hypersensitivity reaction results in cavitation within your lungs, and so when you cough, the bacterium is exhaled and can infect other people, and thus completing the cycle. Now, Remember that not everyone develops secondary tuberculosis, it's only 10-15% to 15 and a majority of the cases are HIV positive. Now that we've looked at the immune response against tuberculosis, it's obvious that T helper cells play a central role and so HIV positive individuals are susceptible to TB and can present differently to HIV negative patients. Okay, there you have it, TB immunology. Make sure you leave any questions in the comment box below and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. A special thanks to PCS for this collaboration and you can find our contact details and Instagram links down in the description box below. Alright, until next time, take care. This is the Caffeinated Medic, signing off.